Hey guys, and welcome to the Hobby News. All right, so this week we've got some pre-orders up, uh, coming on Saturday, I guess. Uh, we've looked at these before, but we'll go through them uh, for GW. And uh, then we've got a, a fun little new model coming for Necromunda, which I think is uh, pretty damn cool. And uh, speaks well for the future releases for that particular faction, which I'm excited about. And then finally, we'll take a look at um, a nice honorable mention uh, for Creaturecaster, who have just released a really cool, I guess, giant or titan, whatever you want to call it, uh, but inspired by some different imagery than let's say what GW might do uh, you know most of their giants and so on their gargants as they call them are, are more sort of like you know they, they sort of look like grumpy old men you know what I mean they got that sort of that sort of look which is a very classic giant look um, you know sort of fairy tale sort of story kind of look for a giant uh, but here we'll see a different kind of uh, take on what giants are more in the line of I guess maybe Greek or, 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 or Roman mythology that sort of thing uh, and we'll take a look at it and see what we think but um, yeah, to start with, we'll look at the previews. So uh, we've got the Sylvaneth and the Skaven coming, and it's that uh, that box set that they have. So we've already looked at this, but you know, it's pretty cool for people that, that want that. I think it's definitely got more value for Sylvaneth players than it does the Skaven, uh, even though the, the little Skaven assassin there is a pretty fun model. Uh, I think the probably the, the Sylvaneth is what you'd be getting this for if you were doing it, um, because they have some nice new models. Those fey uh, sort of creatures are, are really cool, and uh, the, main, the main character character with the the multi arms the sort of uh organic mecha that, that i was talking about before when we were discussing this um yeah i really like all the all those vibes they're doing for that for that particular faction it's pretty cool and um you know although the videos haven't dropped yet i am as, I, as i've said a few times now going to be painting some elves for the first time and we've got uh, one coming up soon which i think should be next week we should see that video uh and i, I posted in, in my little uh community post section uh, a little preview of of some of the models that we'll be doing over the next coming weeks and, and months. Uh, but I, d I definitely will be trying a, a Sylvaneth model and uh, there's now quite a few new ones to choose from, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, originally, I was going to go for the Warsong Revenant. Uh, I think that's his name, the that character, and that'd be a really fun one to do. But now they've got a few new ones. I'm not sure. I don't know which one I'll choose. But uh, definitely, you'll see some of that on the channel if you're into elves and Sylvaneth and so on. I'll be I'll be doing one. They have colors I like. A lot of those teals and blue-greens are definitely in my in my wheelhouse. Uh, so you'll see something like that on the channel, but we might go a different color. I don't know yet, but um, yeah, pretty cool. So all in all, a uh, pretty fun bunch of models there for those that are into it. And then we've got um, now a combat patrol for uh, custodies. So uh, again, I think we've looked at this before. Look, custodies are a great, a great one. Uh, I talk about this one in my hobby chats uh, about you know, having a faction that is more of a gaming faction that you can uh, paint up quickly and get on the table and uh, get your games in. It's part of the reason why I chose the color scheme for uh, my Stormcast. Um, it's a, it's a, it's an efficient uh, color scheme that you can get done, but still looks really nice uh, and has some, I guess, higher processes in it. But overall, it's relatively uh, easy to do, and you can get a good result, which means you'll be happy with them. So it's not quite a speed painting army and not quite a high-end painting army and that's a really good middle ground to have for a gaming army that you're going to get on the tabletop quickly so you can paint them relatively fast and you can keep up with your with your your games and, and the meta and so on and custodies is a great one for 40k uh, you know they're an elite army there's a lot of models you can get it done quickly and they are relatively competitive generally uh, they've gone through a bit of a, a roller coaster ride with their rules but still they're a great one just to get your feet wet and, and get into it and and they feel feel like they're meant to they they do feel powerful each individual character feels like you know what a space marine should be even though space marines like don't really have that but like custodies do you get to see what it feels like to have this type of superhuman warrior and, and, and what they can do and i think that's really cool so if you want to get into that flavor this is a really nice one to try and and i think true metallic color schemes are definitely the way to go for that type of thing um, because they're just so forgiving. You can do so much with it and you can, and, and it always looks nice. There's no real, you can't really go wrong with metallic schemes. So this is definitely one that I would choose if, if you were going that way. And there's already a few uh, videos on the channel. If you want to look at those, I'm doing a kind of blue steel color scheme uh, with all my color glazing and so on. But um, you know, you can do these in any, any metallic and it's going to look great. So yeah, definitely something to think 
consider if you're doing 40k and you just want to get something painted and get it on the table and they, they are pretty satisfying to play with these jet bikes and so on the fast moving units you know that they've got a bit of variety in terms of how they play and that that's really nice so yeah definitely a, a nice one there and then they're releasing the in this uh the, the the champion guy here the blade champion that was in that um in that promo box uh he's going to be uh, released individually now so you can pick him up if you if you want if you're into custodies uh yeah it's pretty cool and then we've also got the one that was uh going against him this uh reductus uh, saboteur so yeah for the uh gene stiller colts so that's really good too so they release them individually which they which they usually always do you, you'll usually see those 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 limited or new release models in those boxes come out individually so you don't have to rush out and buy that promo box generally speaking which is nice you know uh, i know there's a lot of sort of uh hype around these promo or FOMO boxes as people call them uh, but you know you don't have to rush out and get them you can wait and pick up the individual things that you want as you go uh, it's more important that you know you um you know, withhold and, and don't spend straight away, then, then go out and get it, unless it's for the faction that you really love and you just want those models. But, you know, building up that willpower is a, is a healthy thing, right? So, yeah, all, all good. They're bringing those out. And then we've got, again, uh, the individual warbands that came out with this Warcry set the uh what was it called um red harvest or something like that yep that that box set so we've got the um i forgot what these ones are called what are they called oh yeah the uh dakoth savages or whatever they are uh yeah pr pretty pretty fun very conan-esque uh kind of uh war band and then we've got the ones that i thought were were pretty novel idea and and something that's you know, pretty cool for uh, trying out different color schemes, these sort of spider-influenced uh, warband here, the Tarantulas uh, Brood. So I really like these models. I think they're really fun. A lot of those those Warcry uh, warbands are, yeah, pretty cool little unique ideas. They get to play around with some interesting stuff. And this one definitely has that, you know, you can see the designers that... Uh, you know, took their time with these and had a bit of fun trying to figure out something unique. Uh, I don't know what the rules are like, but definitely the models are fun, and and I and I really like really dig that. So yeah, definitely cool there. And then um, yeah, we've got obviously these. Oh, okay, so they're doing yeah separate scenery packs, so you can do that if you want to. You know, expand on your Red Harvest kind of uh, you know setting. That's pretty cool. And then we have our usual books and so on. Uh, I don't think there's anything else uh, particularly cool here. Yeah, key rings or whatever. Okay, all good. So then we'll move on to what I think is, uh, yeah, a really, really good look at what's to come for this particular faction. So we've got uh, a squat sort of mecha suit, battle suit, uh, but in Necromunda and a, I guess a more mining one, the one, the the dwarves that call themselves squats, I guess, because we've got the Legion of Otan, but we've got these sort of original kind of, these are what the, I guess these are really the successors to the older you know, range of squat models. These really are the squats. The the leagues of Votan are kind of a different hybrid kind of species, I guess, uh, to what these particular dwarves are. These are really the the new in, invention of what of what squats are because they call themselves squats. So we're seeing that, and and it's all sort of mining and that sort of thing, which is great. You know, that's that's exactly what you want. And we saw the unit that they that they brought out or the gang uh, for Necromunda a few videos ago, and now we're seeing uh, their big suit that they're going to have and that's really cool so let's take a look at it so i'm sure most of you have already seen this on social media and so on uh but yeah what, what a what a fun design so you know they're they're getting all these rounded forms you know it's got that dwarfish look uh this actually reminds me a lot of um oh, what's you know, like sort of in Skyrim, you know, the, I forgot what they are, they had those sort of mechanoid kind of in those underground tombs, you'd get that sort of thing. I can't remember what they're called now, but someone in the comments can remind me what, what the name of that is. But they're those big uh, mechanized sort of steampunk kind of robots that were sitting all around in those in those underground uh, tombs that you'd go and raid the 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 Dwemer is that what they are the Dwemer I think that's what it is but those big walkers this kind of has that vibe right the um, the silhouette is kind of similar we're getting this sort of rounded shape at the top uh, yeah it's it's got a lot of little uh, influences here that are kind of fun and um, definitely feels dwarfish it feels you know in line with what they would have um, the little squat helmet in here uh, yeah I really like this I, I think this is a good uh, direction for them it's got a little bit of that retro robot 1950s kind of 
you know, Americana sort of vibe, but not as much as, let's say, the Adeptus Mechanicus or some of the other factions that use that kind of, those kind of shape language. You know, we're seeing a little bit more modernization of that. And I, I like that. I prefer that a lot. Um, it's a bit more industrial. We're seeing like welding uh, pieces here, you know, little struts and so on. It's not quite as retro fantasy as, or sci-fi as, as, as some of the other models. And I, and I, and I think that that's a, a good thing. It's going in its own direction, uh, which, is, which is cooler. It's going to mean that it'll, it'll have more, I guess, room to play for the sculptors and the designers to come up with something interesting. So, yeah, I, I like that. I think that's really cool. And obviously the blue-green color scheme is excellent. Uh, good job there. That's the, the best one. So, yeah, re really cool. I like it. So let's see you know let's see if they say anything about how, how it plays so i've been i've been curious about this because necromunda you know isn't really designed for this type of units in the game so i'm curious to see how this plays out but anyway let's see what they say about it these suits of rugged exo armor were originally designed to protect squat miners in their most hostile environments and the ashways definitely qualify they've been upgraded over the centuries with heavier weapons and better defenses and prospector gangs now bring them along to fight off ash uh, ash, ash waste nomads or other hostiles trying to claim their prime dig sites out in the Ekmundian Badlands. Okay, so they're not going to tell us too much about how this works. But um, yeah, I'm assuming when you're playing your Necromunda games, you're either going to agree to allow these kind of big units like the the buggies and so on and this sort of thing, or you're going to just not have them in, in your in your games, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to have to work because I can't imagine this is going to be balanced very well just in mixed warbands. It feels a bit, you know, if, if you've got this and your opponent's just got some basic Orlock gangers or something, you know, you're not really going to be able to contend with basically a sort of mini Dreadnought on the table. It's kind of a bit overpowering so yeah they're, they're definitely going to have to you know obviously have ways to finesse this to make this work in in, in, a, in a warband game where you've only got you know whatever 10 to 15 models on the table uh it's yeah that's tricky so yeah but still really really cool and i can i can see that that's got good uh future i guess you know um yeah, portents for what's coming for the Leagues of Votan. I think that'll be really fun too. So now finally, let's go on to uh, Creature Caster and take a look at what they've released. So yeah, we've got this Titan and uh, it's been done in collaboration with Vince uh, Venturella, which is a YouTuber. If you don't know, he's got a million videos, painting videos, very, very good painter, as you can see from this paint job. Uh, and, you know, he uh, does his Warhammer Weekly and so on, which you can check out. And um, yeah, look, I mean, this is a, a great idea for, for a giant something that's more in line with yes as i said uh, greek mythology and those kinds of things a lot of other cultures around the world don't really depict their you know uh their giants or their their bigger sort of humanoid forms as sort of overweight grumbly old men you know bald old men they they often have them more as sort of this kind of conception where it's like the peak of physical condition you know they're sort of uh angelic almost sort of sort of creatures and that's often what you'll see with sort of giants or titan like uh descriptions of of these godlike beings and here we're seeing it here so exactly what they say so there are beings that exist that are strong enough to resist the reclamation of their universe known as titans these demigods wander the de demon realm seeking vengeance and salvation for the destruction of their world they are symbols of life and resistance the refusal to submit to the merciless whims of creation so this is part of the creature caster universe so these are sort of beings that are not going down the the greater demon uh, road of becoming you know sort of completely warped entities they're they're maintaining their humanoid form so that's pretty cool and i think it's it doesn't say what it what it costs here but i've, I've checked out the world uh, store and it says 165 dollars so i'm assuming that's in canadian dollars so that gives you an idea of the price which is pretty much in line with what else they do of this size uh, so let's take a, a closer look at this model and see what it's like so this is cast resin uh, and it looks like it's a you know, 100 mil base so it's relatively tall you know they usually do a bit bigger than greater demon size for their for their models they're usually a bit, a bit taller uh, let's see if we get some close-ups so here we go we've got the um, you know the full resin cast here this isn't a render. Uh, this is actually what the resin looks like. And yeah, really beautiful de details. Nicely cut in, uh, not soft at all. We've got like good uh, separations for the forms. We know Vince loves his uh, his uh, muscled uh, men. You know, he's a Slanesh player, so he likes he likes uh, painting flesh. It's one of his things that he enjoys. If you look at his channel, he's got a lot of videos on that. Uh, you know, really great. So he, he's he's definitely uh, the Slaneshi vibes are influenced here, even though this is more of a... You 
you know, a, a non, it's like seduction, but with that sort of uh, reservation there, we're not going all in on debauchery, we're, we're keeping ourselves reserved, you know, it's, it's, it's that sort of classic Greek look at, uh, at, at perfection in the, in the human body. And um, yeah, really cool. So let's see if we've got a close up. Here we go. So yeah, very nicely cut in details. Creature Casted, you know, does a good job of having very detailed models, but generally speaking, uh, they, they do pay attention to uh, their forms so that they are good to paint. Because one of those things that you find often is that, um, you know, let's say a lot of third party uh, sculptors and so on that do produce uh, don't always pay attention to some of those details. And so here we're seeing quite a strong uh, attention to that. So, you know, if you're painting the flesh, you know, or any washes or anything you're going to do, it's going to hit those lines where the, where these details are in, in the flesh and not, and, not, and not spill over. You're going to get a good, um, yeah, a good separation or shadow line there, which is nice. And, and that's what you want in, in something like this, uh, where it's got so much detail and swirling masses everywhere you want to be able to pick those details out and make them really really stand out against that flesh so you get material uh, variation so yeah really cool here um, you know good anatomy the sculptor's done a great job of, of these of these forms getting the the squeeze of that fist ar around the around the the shaft of that spear so we're seeing the muscle there and on a model this size you can get into that kind of detail um, you know it, it's it's really cool we've got some uh, good uh, eyes here you know, good expression, even in that small area. You know, it, it's a great model of the beads coming down here. There's a lot going on in a very sort of what could be quite a static pose. There's a lot of attention to small movements of, of, of the secondary and, and tertiary details. Yeah, look, beautiful. It's moving forward. We're getting that nice arch in the back. Um, the robe is, is coming down from those steps. So we're seeing a flow here, even in this very sort of, as I said, standing position, there's that potential for movement, even though it's not really a contra Contraposto stance, so it's got a slight contraposto stance. It's which is the the twist in the torso. So you've got the shoulders moving in one direction and the hips moving in another to to imply uh, movement, which is something that sculptors traditionally do. And this does have it, but it's just a very a very soft version of that. Uh, but it, it's got some nice flow of movement there. Yeah, really great. So I'm sure you know you get an airbrush on this. This would be awesome, right? So it's got a lot of lot of potential for that. Um, yeah, everything here is cut well. It all it all you know there's not huge gaps there's some small gaps but that's all very very easy to fix it's hard to do uh, anatomy like this and do your cut lines and so on for the different parts and not end up with gaps on areas that are exposed uh, i myself have to struggle with that if you go in the down there the blood of god's brand is my brand and i sculpt and and produce uh, 3d printed uh, miniatures and so on and you'll see there um, a lot of the models i have don't have a lot of clothing on it's quite bare like this like this model and um, finding the spots to do the cut lines is 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 a challenge um, um, you know it's something that you always have to be trying to figure out where's the best spot to make the cut so that the painter doesn't have to constantly fill gaps and so on and they get a nice seamless uh, go across those those uh, bare uh, skin areas but you know they've done a good job here to try to hide it which is nice um, lots of internal spaces and 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 uh, lots of uh, moments of of interest here yeah it, it's it's a great model right it's uh, pretty cool oh and even a bald version that's good if you want to do the the the, the classic bald giant here it is you've got it uh, without the without the helmet um, this is also a very uh, classic idea in most mythologies where the the you know they, they don't really have hair or they're they're sort of sort of very I guess almost um, almost androgynous I, I guess human forms like they're definitely male but there's there's not a lot of, apart from the, the musculature, there's not a lot about them that really gives them a sense of individuality or, or, or human kind of concepts of, of a person. They're kind of like the, the idea of a, of a person, you know, and, and that sort of bald, blank kind of, kind of look is, is what you want to sort of achieve that. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, they've, they've definitely tried to, to capture some of that really nice, uh, sword here. You can see the Slaneshi influence in a lot of these forms. That's definitely coming from Vince. Uh, you know, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things going on here, which, which, uh, you know, bode well for this, this model. I mean, yeah, he'd make a great Slaneshi greater demon, right? If you want to do something a little bit, a little bit different, this would make a really cool one. You know, that's, uh, definitely a, a way you could go down, uh, or, or, or a mega gargant, right? Just like go completely different on, 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 a, on a Gargan army and do this as your as your main Gargan, uh, your gatebreaker or whatever. Um, yeah, 
Really, really cool. I really like that. So I think we'll uh, pop back over to uh, the biggest giant of them all and uh, we'll leave it there. So I've been waffling on for about 20 minutes. Hopefully someone's still listening to this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.